Hey, welcome to Integrated Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith. How are you all today? Wars and rumors of wars. You all ready for war? There sure have been a lot of rumors about them, had not it? Well, I'll talk about that for a minute. First off, there's, uh, there's important news for you stone, stone modders. You know who you are. For those people who don't know what in the world a stone monitor is, it's somebody who's read all of my books, the Stone Mont series. Right there they are. And the good news is I just finished the sixth book today. Um, <clears throat> the new title is out. I'm not going to share it here, but the people over on Patreon got a sneak preview of the cover. The cover's all done. It's cool. Um, and uh, so that's over the people on Patreon can see that. Uh, I wrote the last word of the last chapter just a couple of hours ago. Now we go through the process, or I go through the process, of going through it and seeing any, you know, trying to catch all my typos, and uh, and then seeing if there's anything that I need to add here or there, or change around, you know, just stuff like that, the editing process. I will go through that. <clears throat> That'll take, uh, I don't know, a few days. And then uh, I will send it off. Then I'll make sure it's all formatted, put in the front material and, and all that and the dedications. Send it off. Have, uh, have them print off some uh, couple of proof copies that they send back to me. And then I look, them, look through everything. I give a couple of copies to other people. I ask them to go through and, and uh, you know, check me for all of my mistakes and uh, go through that, and then I make the corrections that I need to, and uh, send it back, and they send me another one, and I see if all the corrections were made right, and if they were, then I say, go to it and make it available for sale. So we're hoping for a, <clears throat> we're hoping for a late February release, I can now say that, and, uh, and I'll put that, now, you know, I'll let you know when it's, when it's available, um, but, but again, for those of you who say, what in the world are you talking about? Uh, the Stonemont series, my books, the reversion, the revival, the renewal, an appeal to heaven, and the blessings of freedom, they're available, have been uh, for years, down at, uh, I'll put the links down there, to Amazon. <clears throat> you can get them on either paperback or a Kindle, and, or you can get autographed copies from me. You don't get them as fast as you get them from me because I've sometimes run out and then I've got to order some more and then I've got to wait for them to be delivered and then I've got to, the whole process. If it's important to you and you don't mind waiting, you can order autographed copies, copies from me. If you want them fast, get them from Amazon because that's what they specialize in, right? Oh, also the people over on Patreon got to, to see how I keep my coffee warm. My new invention of the day, how I keep my coffee warm through the day. Uh, that link's down there too if you'd like to join us on Patreon. You get a lot of more stuff over there, cool stuff, special stuff that never makes it to YouTube. So. Wars and rumors of wars. Y'all been hearing a lot about the wars lately, right? Ukraine, um, we're sending, and I don't, I, I, I got tired talking about this. I'll be real honest. I just get tired talking about this because we know what's going to happen, right? It's a foregone conclusion. <clears throat> uh, they're going to war because they want to go to war. I mean, that by that, I mean our leaders <clears throat> and the little puppet over there in Ukraine. <clears throat> they want a war. Uh, to cover up a lot of mistakes, as always happens, uh, and to make money. Th those are the, the main reasons that we have wars. If you haven't read Smedley Butler's War is a Racket, go, go get it. I've got it over there somewhere. Uh, I've, I've given out so many copies. Smedley Butler, Google it, order it on Amazon. War is a Racket. Every war we've ever had, in my opinion, since the Revolution, and some would maintain that was about money, Every other war was about money. Every other war. I know it's all sold on patriotism and standing up against the red commie menace and or the yellow menace or the green menace or the whatever menace. And it's all sold on that and patriotism. We have to go fight over there so they don't come over here and it is all BS. They want a war because they want to make money. So a war's coming. There's nothing we can do about it. Uh, <clears throat> What well, we can do, and, and, and in the interim, and, you know, they're sending tanks, right? Is Germany sending tanks? I think Germany's sending tanks. I think somebody else is sending tanks. People are sending tanks. You know, you don't send tanks if you don't want war, I, I wouldn't imagine. 
and uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the response of. Anyway, that's that's for other people to deal with. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't pay that much attention because I know that they just want us to all be upset about this on a daily basis. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? War, war, war. We're going to. Okay, look. <clears throat> How does it affect you? Now, what do you need to do about it? Because this isn't a war channel. It shouldn't be a war channel. It's supposed to be a preparedness channel, right? This is supposed to be about preparedness. It means <clears throat> how are you going to make it through the latest challenge, whatever it may be, uh, in the best shape possible? What do you do? Well, you know, we, we know what happens with war. <clears throat> it's good for an economy in certain sections of the economy. Uh, some people are going to make out like bandits. There are going to be opportunities to make money. There's also going to be problems in the economy. Uh, it depends on whether what the responses are from the other side. The other side could <clears throat> decide, well, you know, you're sending your tanks in. Guess what? We've got a computer hacker here in wherever, and he's going to cause disruptions in your energy delivery systems. Okay. That's, that's the way a lot of wars are going to be fought in the future. It's silly to be sending these tanks over there and all the men and everything like that, but that's the way they make money. They don't make a lot of money. <clears throat> well, some hacker down, you know, six stories below MacDill Air Force Base hacking out on his computer. Just a second. Sorry, I had to clear my throat. I'm still getting over this junk. Um... They don't make money off of that. They make money off of armaments and, and sending stuff and tanks and F-16s and sending people because that means then they have to send all the stuff. You know, I made a bundle off of Halliburton stock back when when uh, the, the, the Gulf Wars were going on, right? Because uh, they were bound and determined to build up over there. And who was, at the, who was, who was the big builder? You know, Halliburton. So, so if you've got, you know, I'm not going to tell you what to do with that. But what, what, what's going to be the effect on you? We, we could have some incoming cyber attacks. That's going to put a big dent in who knows what. You know, uh, energy delivery, food delivery, uh, could raise havocs with your bank accounts, with uh, your other accounts. Um, we know where the soft targets are, right? And you got to figure that our enemies do too. What would cause you the biggest mess in your life? Okay. What if you couldn't access your online banking? And there will be a few out there that says, that's why I don't trust banks. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I get you. Good, good for you, good for you. But, you know, if, if, you, don't, if you don't do some or a lot of your life online, uh, you're pretty much, you've made life so difficult for yourself, and you've cut yourself out of many opportunities that are here right now. But uh, you should keep a nice bunch of cash on hand how much i don't know that's up to you you know whatever you're comfortable with i would suggest you have at least a couple of months of of living expenses in cash at home just in case something happens and all of a sudden hey debit card's not working right because the system's come down or your bank's offline or whatever your mortgage company whatever like this you know uh, mortgage company don't worry they'll get their money <clears throat> They'll come back online as soon as they can. But you're going to have disruptions in this. Um, food delivery, we, we saw what the shortages were like uh, back during the big scare. Um, you know, most of that has come back. Most of it has come back. The prices are a lot higher because they, they always use these things to jack up those prices so that people, you know, feel lucky to get something uh, at, that they couldn't get for a while at twice the price that they used to get it. Um, but for the most part, that's, that's back. Uh, we don't have a bunch of container ships bobbing around out in the ocean anymore. You know, that's all been delivered or else returned. Um, so as far as, you know, the things that we have, uh, the, the, our delivery systems, um, they're in pretty good shape, you know. But the past has shown us what the problems can be, right? And so, uh, you know, Prudence would simply dictate that you stock up on the things you need. Yesterday, uh, uh, my oldest and I spent some time in, uh, in one of our uh, storage areas, uh, kind of redoing some of it, re repositioning 
a lot of stuff and and taking a stock i don't keep real close stock on on everything you know uh but kind of took a look and saw where where i think okay i'm gonna gonna bring some more of that in um and uh, and I, I might advise that you do the same just take a kind of a look at what you think you you have gotten a little low on you know if you don't it, it, it's it's a good idea, of course, to to get everything up to the to the point to where you need it, where you believe you're self sufficient for whatever amount of time you think it'd be right for you. Yes, I I recommend seven years. Okay, but that's just me. Other people will recommend a year. Other people will recommend six months. You know, a month. Okay, I, I don't think that's nearly enough, but maybe that's going to be enough to to get through some of the little things that are coming along. Um, but I believe to, the, to the, the extent that you can, you should uh, prepare for as long as you can because there's no way for you to know how long something is going to last. So, so take a look at your, at your food preps, at your other preps, uh, and see, are you a little bit weak in summer? Are you a little bit light? Um, <clears throat> tighten that up to, the, to, to you know, the best of your ability, as much as you can afford uh, on what you think, because... Uh, if if war does come, um, this is a different time than World War II. Okay, uh, you can't really compare this to the so-called Gulf Wars, or um, because I mean those, those were wars that didn't really affect too many people. You can't you can't compare it to Vietnam. That was a war on the other end. It wasn't much of a war. It was just a, a you know a sacrifice of over fifty thousand American lives. Uh, but made a lot of money for the people that wanted the war. Um, you can't really compare it to the world wars, uh, especially the Second World War, during which time, you know, there were shortages, uh, uh, shortages of all sorts of things. You know, I used to, I used to listen. I didn't listen as much as I should have, but I listened to my parents talk about, uh, and my mother knew it more than my dad. My dad was over fighting in Europe, but my mom, you know, would tell us about the shortages of things like sugar and nylons and, and uh, all sorts of things. You know, that that they that they contended with here because it was all needed for the war effort. So we don't know what what it would really look like here. Um, would there be shortages? I don't know. You know, usually shortages of something come with large land wars uh, or an interruption of delivery. You know, that, that could be. Um, we get, you know, so much from China, all of a sudden we saw what happened before, all right? Now, all of a sudden, no boats from China. Not just slow boats from China, but no boats from China. And we are living through another um, shortage. That Could it happen? Yeah, it could happen. Now, as far as um, the big one, you know, uh, I'll probably find a picture of, of the, the big one to put as a thumbnail on this. Uh, is that possible? <clears throat> Who knows? You know, people are talking about these hypersonic missiles that, that uh, Vlad has. Um, and we know that they're, you know, and people will come out and say, they're, they've got one sitting off our coast. Hey, they've had, they've had them sitting off our coast since, you know, the end of the Second World War, just with upgraded weapons. So, y'all, yeah, they're out there. <clears throat> you know, the, the point to which the Ukrainian situation is going to build and flash, we don't know. What's going to happen with NATO, we don't know. Um, what's going to happen with our own leadership, we don't know. Our own leadership probably doesn't know. Um, but if something happened, I wouldn't be too concerned with the big one unless I lived on the coasts. And I'm not saying that would happen. I'm going to say that if I was living on the coast, I'd be a little more concerned than I am since I live in Kansas, uh, regardless of that movie the day after. Um, <clears throat> I imagine that if they started, it wouldn't start with a, a full-out attack. But, you know, hey, <clears throat> looking at the weakness of our leadership, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they shot one of those things in, you know, the, the ones that are so fast that they can't be stopped, apparently. I don't know. Uh, now, would, would they target something like New York, Miami? I doubt it. Philadelphia, L.A., uh, Long Beach. See, I, I doubt it. Houston? I doubt it. Because that would just um, almost be something that we couldn't ignore and, and would 
would um, guarantee a response and, and probably a full-throated response from us. Okay. And I'm, I'm not talking about, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, 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 a tactician, you know, a war tactician. It'd just be my thought. This was what I would be thinking about. You know, I might be a little bit more concerned if I were, if I lived in Myrtle Beach, you know, a smaller target that he could, he could zip one of those hypers in there and boom. And all of a sudden, okay, Joe, um, see what I did? You couldn't stop it. Um, here's what we want from you. Or the next one's coming. Yeah. With a weak leadership like ours and a fragmented leadership like ours, I mean, I, that wouldn't surprise me a bit. And, you know, when I say the fragmented leadership, I mean, look how fragmented our, our, our political uh, so-called leadership is. Look how fragmented our military leadership is. Every time we've had a, and I, again, I'm no military expert, but I can read. And every time we've had a Democrat um, president, pretty much ever since Carter, they, they, they pretty much destroy the military. You know, they take everything away from the military. They reduce defense funding, uh, except when they have a war they want to go after. Uh, they misuse the military. They send them all over the world on things that the military has no business doing. You know, they turn them into a Meals on Wheels. Uh, and, and so many of the very best ones leave. You know, I, I, I've read, I don't know how many times, during, uh, <clears throat> during Democrat administrations, Clinton, Obama, um, <clears throat> how, how many general officers, how many flag officers, you know, they, they call them that because they get little flags on their cars, right? Or jeeps, or whatever. Uh, how many generals and admirals have left? And they, they do so because they, they simply refuse to um, you know, serve. They, they say, well, this isn't going to be the military that I want to serve in. I've known... Uh, a number of those myself. I know a far greater number of guys who were, you know, in very, very good units that say, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not going to serve under these people. And if they're close enough to retirement, they're gone. And um, if they're, even if they're not, I've had some, some friends leave, I mean, way short, you know, 15 years in and said, I'm not taking this anymore. <clears throat> So, you know, I, I don't know, but um, from, from an outsider looking in and also from what people who know better than I do tell me, uh, this is not the military that we would like to have. doesn't mean there aren't some good people and there aren't some fine people still in there, but as a rule, uh, this is not the military that we would like to have. And, and I have to say, I just know too many uh, people who, um, who, who have been recently in the military that are, are, are not the sharpest. Can I say that? Well, of course I can. It's my channel. I just said it. Um, you know, no, no, uh, no offense to the military guys out there, but, but just because somebody's in the military does not make them above average. Okay? And uh, many of them are below average, just like other jobs. There's a lot of below average cops out there, and so I can paint everything with the same so nobody gets mad. You can't say that about the military. <laughs> yes, I can. I've known too many of them. Uh, so, you know, what's going to happen with this? <clears throat> Anything. There's no way to know. But what we do know and what we can know is that tightening ourselves up and becoming as self-sufficient as possible is the defense against whatever is coming. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's really where you need to be putting your, your energy and, and, and your psychological energy and your mental energy, okay? Uh, and not worrying about, not following every little, you know, uh, uh, every little blip that's, that's designed to get you all excited and get you all inflamed and get you all worried and get you all scared. Uh, I, I see, and you do too. Uh, some of the most amazing titles on, well, headlines on in, in news articles and, and titles on, on videos and things like that. And I go, my gosh, 
how, how do they come up with these? How do they keep coming up with these, you know, uh, these titles every day? And it's, every day is something new. Well, you know, it's not, it's not new. It's the same stuff. And the path to real preparedness is not new either. Get the things you need to get. You know, make sure that your team, your family, your friends, your group, whatever, make sure that they're all kind of tightened up and staying, uh, staying aware of what's going on. You know, uh, something could happen, um, and you will need to know how you know to get a hold of those people. The communication system's going on. That doesn't have to be an EMP. Doesn't have to be a CME, like I wrote so much about. Uh, could be cyber, you know, and all of a sudden. Um, you can't get a hold of people. You need a, a, a better way. You need another way to get a hold of people. So think about those things. Uh, don't get all excited. Don't get all alarmed because when you're excited, you're dealing, you know, emotionally. And emotional decisions are rarely the best decisions. You need a clear mind. You need to come at these things with, you know, a, a determinant attitude and know exactly what you're doing. And don't let the rest of the world uh, get you all aflame um, because that's what they want to do. That's what they want to do. Um, because that, that sells, right? But it doesn't do you any good. And that's what you want. So wars or rumors of wars. There always have been. There always will be and more rumors than actual wars, right? So, uh, settle down. But do, I would suggest, increase your preparedness to the extent that you can without, you know, without going into debt and things like that. Um, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep doing exactly what I've been doing. And I'm going to keep writing. I, I just finished the sixth book. I've already got half the seventh book up here. And I can't wait to get to it. And um, so that'll be out soon. Guys, for those of you uh, remember that our sponsor, my books, the Stonemont series, uh, the sun's glaring off of there, the Stonemont series, uh, the reversion, the revival, the renewal, and appeal to heaven, and the blessings of freedom. These will tell you everything you need to know about preparing for, surviving, and building better on the other side of whatever catastrophe may befall you. And they're available on Amazon down below or from me. And join us over on Patreon so that you get all that extra good stuff. I think you'll like it, and that link is down there below. So remember that we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. Get out there and do something, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.